We'll be looking at issue-based campaign ahead of the governorship election in those states. Well, we've seen clerics coming out to speak on this issue. We saw a video making around where a seasoned a preacher in the state talking about Pastor uh, Charles Osazwa, where he was addressing politicians in a forum. And he actually advised them to stick to issue-based campaign. And I think this will form our discussion this morning as we have in our studio from my immediate left is our comrade Kelvin Isesele Bosu. Uh, he's a business expert and he's also a grassroots politician. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, my brother. Good morning. Comrade Ambassador. I think we shouldn't forget that now. I actually was uh, made an ambassador uh, recently. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you very much. Okay, we also have with us from my... Uh, extreme left is uh, Paul now Peter. from Peter. I actually told you that your your identity uh, is kind of uh, causing serious problem. We need to sit the two of you down together mm. and have a kind of mark so that after the election we will now know who is who. So Peter Kumba uh, is here with us in the studio. Uh, he's the spokesperson for the YPP ahead of the governorship election. That's the Young People's uh, mm -hmm. Young, part, progressive, young party. progressive Party. All right, let's begin with you now. Looking at the election so far, what is your assessment? Well, um, viewers, good morning. Good morning, Sadeh Bami. Good to have you. It's at this time very worrisome that the political actors so far have not engaged the people as such. Um, just when the elections formally flagged off, I expected that um, all these political parties mm. at the front line, the APC, PDP, and Labour, should start telling their two people something different. Because at this time around, we don't want to have it politics as usual, at least from the YPP standpoint, from the YPP stand, mm. we want an issue-based campaign wherein the voter education and voter sophistication matters as far as this election goes, so that people don't begin to premise choices on emotions or mm. such um, feelings that might be considered ethnic, as ethnic chauvinism or one, of, one or two reasons that are not deeply founded on principles. We wanted these choices to be based on choice, on these choices to be based on issues vis-a-vis -vis the average common man, the ordinary man in the street of a do state has certain things that they're looking forward to. We've clamored for basic life amenities even as our lives are beginning to wander off. Because for a guy who just turned 40, mm. the chances of him seeing another 40 added to his life is in the hands of God. And the political class just now, who have the custody of the common patrimony of the people, have a, owe them a responsibility to give them a life, at least the basics, the basic life amenities should be granted to them. Mm. So, so far, I have not heard from any of these political parties about policies as it's directed to the education sector. I like to tell the people that my present model of what the public, is, public schools should be, mm. it's Bono State, a war-ravaged state for that matter. And um, what is even more, in terms of IGR, Bono does not take what it do gets. In terms of the federal um, allocation, Bono doesn't come near us because we're oil producing. Mm. But just go on the internet and see what Professor Zulum is doing there in the education sector. In fact, Sadebame. The physical structures of the schools in Bonu are so inspiring that you may want to go back to primary school or secondary school when you see how this man has infrastructurally bequeathed to the future a sense of education and a sense of value mm. for education. Okay. And then when you look at Edo State mm. and you look at our so-called Red Roof Revolution and the bungalow structures and structures that are not so inspiring, you get to ask yourself, these monies that are being made in Edo State, I, I listen to the a candidate of the PDP in the person of uh, Dr. Asio Kodalo say on TV mm. during the last Lagodo summit that the revenue base of Edo had improved from 15 billion to 25 billion. Okay, okay, Paul, we'll, we'll pause you here. I'll get back to you in a moment. Now, you are a business at Icon. You've also interfaced with youth over the years, and you're a young man at that. And as a grassroots politician, uh, what do you think is the current pressing issue in Edo State? <coughs> Good morning, our viewers. Uh, in my own opinion, I think the pressing issues we have in Edo State today is lack of leadership will and political will to bring the dividends of democracy to the ordinary man at the street level. Uh, <clears throat> a lot of political actors mm. 
our milk sex, where they pick up the microphone and say things that are not even in existence, just to kind of uh, inspire the audience. But some of us, we sit back and analyze every word you say. We know what you can do and what you cannot do. Just like my senior colleagues were saying, if you go to Borono State, for example, you have infrastructural development. But I want to say, there is a difference between Borono State and Edo State. Okay, Borono State is faced with insecurity, heavy insecurity. We don't have that here in Edo State. And I think the, the, the Northeast Development Project, the money allocated for that, Borono State Governor is actually using it mm. uh, for the benefit of the people. Coming back home here in Edo State, mm. we have road problem. We have electricity problem. We have <coughs> agricultural problem. These are three things I felt is a challenge we need to fix. For example, when you fix the road from Agenegude to Bine, mm. my grandmother, who is currently planting corn now, by June, July, August, he should be able to transport his corn to Bine City to sell within one and a half hours drive. But when you did not fix the road, my grandmother would be scared to pass through the gallows before she would definitely get to Bini City after two, three days. Because the road is blocked. The road is not good. So what they don't need us at this moment is accessible road. Okay. Thereafter, we need to identify the core farmers in Edo State. We need to encourage farmers. We need to go back to the rural development project where a farmer will go to his farm and make uh, a good farming product, either commercial or subsistence farming, for the uh, mass production of food in the state level. Thereafter, electricity. Why do I always talk about electricity? Because every young man out there can actually provide for himself if he has 24 hours energy. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't be looking for C4. Uh, you would be looking for a uh, dough jobs. You would be looking for areas where you can submit an application. You will automatically become a self-employed if we have stable electricity. So I thought the present governor was doing his best uh, through the uh, Osteomo power plant. Unfortunately, it is still an electricity for the highest bidder, where the common man cannot even access. And it's not functionable as been designed on the project. So these are area I fed. Any candidate, any political party should have, they should just make a three point agenda. Mm. If we solve agricultural product, electricity, and road network, I think those state will be moving in the right direction. Okay, Peter Akumbawa, um, who are the leading candidates in this election? Yes, we have 16 people on the ballot, 16 political parties on the ballot, and 16 candidates that have registered their interests to take over Osadebe Avenue from Governor Baseki. Looking at all these candidates, uh, do you think that they have what it takes to deliver on their campaign promises? Looking at the 16 of them across party lines. Well, first, I, I thought there were 17 of them in the race. Oh, okay, 17 of them. Okay. 17 um, of them. The truth of the matter is that this election is quite a unique one. Unique in the sense that uh, from May 29, 1999, to date, make it exactly 35 years that the elites have ruled uh, those states, from one elite to the other elite. There's never been a place of a common man in office who can adumbrate on behalf of the common people. Uh, I just say that it takes a man in your shoes to actually understand what you go through. And in fairness to the elites, they can't lead people, they can't lead the Talakawas because it takes you to be amongst them for you to be able to lead them. The concept is even embodied in the Christian doctrine, wherein Christ, God himself had to come in the form of man to be able to live with man, to understand his yearnings and aspirations and his pains, to be able to show him the path to salvation. It's all taking us back to one reality, which is that let him make the political process lucid, clear, and transparent. And the question of who is a leading candidate or who are leading candidates will now come up. As it stands today, I do not know how to measure who a leading candidate is. Is it because you have a billboard presence that have been a bit controlled 
by some instruments? Or is it that you are in the heart of the people, living in the heart of the people? We've seen elections where you could have people present, mm. and yet you are not in the heart of the people. And that also begs the question, are you leading because your programs and policies as you have discussed it to the public is actually people-oriented, mm. such that a common man like me can relate with it to know that you have a plan for me, not rhetorics and jamborees and words that are very fine in print, that when it comes to it being actionable, we are not looking at the viability of these words. For me, this is the time where the electorate this time around are going to be very intentional mm. because I like to say that the generation of those children who were born in the 70s, 80s, 90s, the millennium, and 2005, who are eligible voters in this coming election, their lives are at the precipice. They are the actual victims of the maladministration that has engulfed this country since independence. Mm. They've not been delivered to. The children of the 60s and the 50s could heave a sigh of relief that they benefited Nigeria one way or another. Things we always in this country we always live in the good old days. We always make reference to the good old days. What about a future that is to come? You go to Sena Clown and you are ashamed that in the midst of what we have, mm. we still don't have a functional railway system in Nigeria. Is the railway system in Nigeria today even on electricity or is locomotive? Okay. What does it run on? How are we delivering mm. to that man who is a care rider, okay. who is a carpenter, mm. who has hopes? Okay. That his children mm. would take up okay. the battle. Okay. All right. All right. Now, talk, talking about talking about hopes, uh, Ambassador uh, Bosu, what is the fate of Nigerian youths, Edolites, as it were, ahead of this election? As someone that has been interfacing with them. Well, <clears throat> it's rather unfortunate. Our electoral system has been designed in a certain way that votes are directed by some certain individuals. That is very true. Ah. Uh, I am being, I am realistic of which you know. Put party outside. The every Edo you today has a leader he is subject to mm. against his own conscience. Against his, his or her own conscience. conscience. Yeah, a lot of them will shy away from it. But this is the reality. Okay. We'll be in this process for a very long time. I, for example, I am not different from it. Even when I have a say on my own, but there are still people so, I listen to. So you are guilty to. of this? Yeah, of course. Very guilty of Very, this. very guilty of okay. it. Because I still have someone I listen to okay. who will say, my son, please, because of me, mm. let's do it this way. And this is how votes are directed mm. in Nigeria. Not just only at those states per se. Every state in Nigeria has these tendencies. Okay. This, if we must have a free, fair, and credible process, we should start from... Uh, voters' education. Okay. We have gotten voters' education very, very wrong. Mm. So, therefore, when you go to a certain community, they will tell you, okay, we have heard. We have someone who come and address us. The moment the person comes and tell them, this is the direction I want these votes to go. Mm. That's the direction okay. the vote will go in that place. But unfortunately, okay. mm. in the urban settings, mm. In the urban setting, like the Benin City, okay. for example, mm -hmm. the votes are not majorly directed, okay. we, we need to but the votes are being bought. We need to manage our time right now because okay. we, we have a few minutes to go. Now, we need to manage the next two minutes. You, ha you want to respond to yes, this? I want to quick, to quickly, this. quickly. I, I like the idea that truth is coming out this time around. Mm. And I like to tell you that in 2023 general election, we mm. saw a different trajectory to this narrative. Okay. This narrative is true only mm. when the people are faced with two evils okay. and they have no choice between those two evils. But when they have light, people naturally respond to what will work for them. Mm. In Edo 2024, I like the electorates to start knowing that while the money bags are in the feed, look at eight years from now, because none of them do four years and leave. Mm. Look at eight years, add it to your age, and tell me where you'll be going mm. or where you'll be heading for in eight years. Our healthcare system is it delivering to the poor man and not the ordinary man today. And yet, somebody will come and tell you who to vote for. Mm. And uh, uh, you will forget that in another eight years, it will take another eight years for you to be relevant again, that person, that same leader who comes to tell you, vote, let's go this way. Okay. All right, let's, let's get to your final take now. This is your final take, uh, uh, Ambassador Bosu. Now, looking at the um, 2023 presidential and governorship election that actually took place last year, the outcome, are you expecting any form of voter apathy? Will the youth come out in mass to vote? 
there, there seems to be a kind of a uh, disconnection to an extent where some persons felt their voice weren't heard or their vote wasn't really, didn't really, count. didn't count. So they felt, uh, well, the forthcoming election, we might not really uh, give it them. What says you, Comrade Bosso? Well, I do not agree with that completely. Okay. Because, like I said earlier, people shy away from reality. If you look at 2023 presidential election, yeah, there are some certain uh, miraculous outcomes, but the votes were still directed because majority of the people vote according to where their religious uh, leaders want mm. or where their political leaders want. Okay. Nigeria is still very, very unripe for an individual to dictate who and what he, he or she voted for. Except in the we little have to break urban, this down. Nigeria is unripe. It's unripe. Uh, electionary uh, right. settings, okay. electionary wise. Because one, if you look at that election, the North Tana, especially the Northwest, they consolidated on APC. Mm. Okay. The Southeast, mm. who were originally PDP, okay. consolidated on their own brother. Okay. Okay? So, therefore, the vote was still directed mm. systematically. Okay. What I just want to say, mm. in 2024 governorship election, mm. Yeah, although people will speak, but I doubt if the credibility of the process will allow the actual vote to count. Because we have two tigers. We have the federal system and we have the state system. So they are the tigers the election? Yes, yes. Okay. Those two parties, the PDP and the APC, okay. will run this okay. out. Okay. We are using uh, state uh, apparatus. Okay. Uh, while the other one will uh, have uh, to uh, Ambassador, uh, uh, federal. Uh, Ambassador ah, Bozo, we, we would like to have another time on the show where you'll be expatiating on what we will do to tackle these tigers, <laughs> these two tigers ahead of the election. Thank you so much for taking your time Thank to you come despite much. your tight schedule. And of course, Paul Okumbawa. It's a, you see now you're